Hey y'all, it's David with Beagles on Fire. This is going to be a different kind of video than you're used to seeing me make. Um, my wife will be in part of this video, but I thought I'd start. Uh, it's after rabbit season. We've had a successful season, killed a lot of rabbits. Some people go, well, what in the world do you do with all those rabbits? Well, there's a lot of things you can do with the rabbits, and, and we do give a lot of them away to people who like rabbit. But rabbit is a very good food. It's, it's a white meat. It's a lot like chicken. Uh, you know, everything tastes like chicken when you ask people. And so then people always say, well, why don't you just eat chicken? But anyhow, we've got these rabbits. And if we were harvesting rabbits to the numbers that we're harvesting them to and never used them or gave them to people, that would not make us very good sportsmen. So we do use all the rabbits uh, to either give to other people who want to eat them in a lot of instances, but we do keep a lot ourselves and do stuff with them. So I wanted to show you what I've been working on for the last few days since I got back from hunt season at different times. I've been deboning the rabbit. Now there's a couple ways you can debone rabbit. You can debone it when you clean it, but that's kind of a pain in the rear. So I found the easiest way for me to debone the rabbit was to go ahead and put it in crock pots. I, I clean it up real good, cut it into pieces, quarter it up. A lot of times cut the back. If it's a swamp rabbit, we'll cut the back in half for sure and create like six pieces. And you cut off the bad, anything that's shot up bad or anything like that, get all the hair out of it and all that stuff. So you've got some nice clean meat. You put it in the, in the uh, crock pot. I've got two crock pots that have been going here. And um, you cover it, put a little water, cover the, cover the meat with water, put salt, pepper, and it's what I do. And then I turn it on, I let it cook all night. And then what I do after that is I start the process of deboning it. So I want to show you as I reach in here and move the camera, I'm by myself here. This is what the meat looks like in the crock pot there. Smells good too. No, you can't smell it in the video, but it does smell good. Now, some of you have, uh, have asked me, well, what kind of different dishes do you make with it? Uh, I myself make rabbit dumplings in the crock pot. Some of y'all have had that when I've been places and know exactly what that's like. Very, very good uh, meat, and I am not a cook. This is not where you normally will find me in the kitchen. I'm normally out in the field running dogs, but we've had some rain, some wind, can't run dogs. I thought this would be a good thing to make a video of while we're, while we're doing it. So the, uh, I think it was last night, night before last, I had done this already and had a, a big bowl of uh, pure shredded deboned rabbit meat. And uh, I had this idea that we should make uh, rabbit salad, like a chicken salad, same way you'd make chicken salad. It turned out fantastic. I've got some uh, video of that and some pictures of that that we'll put in this video. And my wife also used some of the shredded meat to make uh, rabbit enchiladas, which is the same thing as a chicken enchilada. You just use rabbit meat. And really, if you did not know it was rabbit meat, uh, you'd think you was eating chicken. You, you, would, you wouldn't think nothing about it. It has no wild taste to it at all if it's done right. But what we do with this stuff, I'll show you in a minute uh, how I shred it and uh, debone it, and then um, show you we put it in vacuum seal bags and put it in the freezer. And that way, when you get ready to make whatever dish you're going to make, the meat is already cooked, doesn't get freeze or burn like it does when you try to put whole rabbits in there. Seems like it's a lot harder down the road once you put the whole rabbit in there. So it's a little work in the beginning, but it does take care of it. So uh, we've done, we fried rabbit, uh, we, we've made uh, rabbit enchiladas, rabbit salad, rabbit dumplings, and then also rabbit sticks. I took those to the processor, so I had quite a, quite a number of rabbits that I took yesterday to the deer processor that I know who turned it into rabbit sticks. And if you're ever down here uh, looking at a dog, hit me up for some rabbit sticks and I'll, I'll give you a package of it to try but it's very, very good. It's like a Slim Jim, but it's made out of, uh, out of rabbit meat. So I'm going to show you next how I debone the rabbit. Okay, so all I've done is taken the meat out of the crock pots and put it in here in this big pan. So you can see I've got one big pan of rabbit pieces. And so I'm going to take those and we just take it out and we just start pulling the meat off of the bone. It comes out in a big chunk on the back. And then you just sit here and you just 
do that. And yes, I did remember to wash my hands before I did this. But you just sit here and you just literally shred this up. It'll look like a chopped barbecue, basically. And you could do that too if you wanted chopped barbecue. I'm sure it would be good. I haven't tried that yet, but I'm sure that would be good. But that's all you do is you just make sure. Now, don't get in a rush and just rush through this because if you rush through it, you'll leave some bone in the meat. And um, I'm not saying it'll never happen, but on the back piece, you've really got to be careful because there's some small bones that will stay in the meat if you don't shred it real good. You got those ribs down there, but you can see this meat is just falling off the bone. And, uh, and I'm just doing that. If I got any bad pieces that don't look like that to me, don't look that good, so I throw that away, pull out the outside little part there, put this in here and just continue to shred this up going through there so i've got you know just three bowls one with the rabbit in it one that the bad stuff's going to go in and you see these little bones right here see that bone just comes off and you just throw that in there because you don't want to be biting down on something and next thing you know you've got uh you've got a bone in your mouth or you've got uh you know uh a piece of shot from your 28 gauge or whatever that that's in your tooth, that, that's, that's not good. So that's the only thing. And yes, you will get that every now and then, no matter how careful you are, but you try to keep that down to a very, very minimum. Uh, people that don't care, just throw this stuff together and uh, you'll have bone and, and possibly shot in it. And when I'm cleaning it to get it ready to go into the uh, crock pots, I try to cut any of the shot out that I see. If I see, you see a little hole in it and you know there's probably shot and hair in, in there. So you try to get all that out because uh, that's not good. But basically you keep doing that. It's just the start of it, but some beautiful, uh, good lean meat. And I want to show you, I've already done this on uh, uh, yesterday. So this has been an ongoing process. So I'm going to show you, this is how much meat. This is a pretty big bowl. Almost the same size as that, but that's the, uh, that's the bowl that I got yesterday off of a group of rabbit just like this. So there's a lot of meat that you can get off of it. And, uh, and then what we do is we take it over, and this one's already froze, froze solid. But this is a vacuum seal bag. Uh, my wife normally puts about three cups or so in there, and she's got it marked rabbit a March of 23 is when we put it in here and um, she's got it all ready to go. So this is already cooked. So if you want an easy meal, uh, you can do either rabbit salad or one of those uh, chicken enchilada or uh, rabbit enchilada, or you can do the, uh, you can do the rabbit dumplings. And we'll try to put those recipes on here and maybe even make a segment where we make some of that stuff without boring you to death. But look, if a dog trainer can do this, anybody can do this. If you can pour water in a crock pot and cut up a rabbit, you can get it to this point. And I'm gonna tell you what, it's nice to come home and have some cooked meat on those nights when you're in a hurry. The, 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 the ideas go on and on and on. Anything you can do with shredded chicken, you can do with rabbit meat. But you just have to do some prep work and, uh, and it's, it, it does take a little time, but it's worth it in the end, it's really good stuff. All right, so now I have the, all of the rabbit meat that I was working on. I have it all vacuum sealed and uh, got, got wrote on it what it is. So my wife can figure it out when she sees it, though she'll probably already know. But I got eight nice bags here. Believe it or not, each of these bags is about this much rabbit meat. And so we're leaving this much rabbit meat for tonight. We're going to have and try something different that she's come up with an idea. We're going to have nachos. Sometimes you have shredded chicken nachos, and we're going to try shredded rabbit nachos and uh, get some pictures of that, let you know how that tastes too. So we're just trying to come up with different ways to use rabbit meat. We use a lot of deer meat, a lot of rabbit meat. If we turkey hunt, we'll get some turkey meat. We'll do some different stuff with that. So, you know, this is about as pure and clean as it gets right here. When you do it yourself, you know everything that went went on with it so that's uh makes you feel uh like a complete hunter when you actually use what you what you've harvested and so some of y'all are missing out because in your mind you think rabbit's not very good but if you're like me you may have had rabbit the way my uh my grandma she's uh 
she's dead and gone now, so I can say this without hurting her feelings. But when I first had rabbit meat as a kid, it was horrible. And that was because my grandma cooked squirrel and rabbit uh, by just basically, as soon as you cleaned it, you brought it in, rolled it in flour and threw it in the frying pan. And 15, 20 minutes later, you ate it. It tastes like leather. So uh, I hated rabbit. And it wasn't until, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago or so that, uh, that I tried rabbit and, and uh, had it cooked the right way and actually liked it. But a uh, lot of different ways to make it. Uh, I've ate a lot of different rabbit that people have made and it all tastes better than grandma's and that's normally not the way it normally goes. But anyhow, uh, got some deer meat, we're or rabbit meat, I say deer meat, rabbit meat we're fixing to take out to the freezer and put away and we'll use this stuff later. Tonight we'll use this for, for uh, rabbit nachos and uh, see how that goes. All right, it's been a it's been a Friday. Been doing this video a little bit earlier today, but uh, told y'all we were gonna do uh, nachos out of rabbit meat. And my wife is home, and we're doing an in-home date night tonight. So she's gonna do some quick nachos for us, and she'll tell you how long it takes and some ingredients about how much to do it. So I'm going to introduce you to my lovely wife, Mary Lee. Give me one second to get this turned around here. There we go. Okay, awesome. So my new thing is that we're discovering all the different things we can do with rabbit meat. And David has been um, cooking it and deboning it, which makes it amazing to work with. We made some chicken salad last night, made some enchiladas, so very, very nice. Tonight we're going to do nachos. Um, <clears throat> it's just David and I, so I typically do about a half a pan. And the reason I do that is our nachos are always loaded. So um, for this amount of nachos, for two people, typically you might do three quarters of a pound of beef or something. This is a lot, and I'm going to use my fingers throughout. It's just the two of us. This is a lot of meat. I think that's four cups. So I kind of cook by taste and feel. I would say, you know, maybe two cups tops. And if you have some left over, you don't want to use that much. You know, you can always put it in a vacuum seal like we're going to do with this when we get done. So kind of eyeball what you want. Um, <clears throat> get, the, get the stove going here. And uh, because it's already cooked, um, David did this in the crock pot. So because it's already cooked, we're just going to put our seasoning in and kind of put the appropriate amount of water. Um, typically, you just use a regular taco seasoning pack. For me, um, we kind of use gluten-free, so that's awesome. Easy to find, easy to do. Just a regular taco seasoning mix. And then if you want to doctor it a little bit, you can do that. Uh, so typically, if you've ever made taco meat at home, you know it takes about a cup of water for um, one package. So I've kind of got something pre-measured here. And just going to go ahead and get it stirred in. Uh, I usually bring my meat to a boil. If it wasn't cooked, of course, you'd, you'd brown it. And you could do it from, you know, fresh rabbit if you'd like, but this is super, super easy. Quick throw together. So we've got it on high. We're going to get it cooking here. Um, just get it stirred in good. You don't want any clumps or any of that. <clears throat> it's going to go together quick, so you don't have as much time to, you know, melt the flavors together. So that's, while well, that's getting started, I'm going to go ahead and move this out of the way because we're going to, like I said, probably vacuum seal that. Uh, we've got some other things going on here. I'm already ready. We like to do um, fresh lime on ours. I think that creates a really nice flavor. And also, when you get a lot of flavors, I think, with game meats, it's really nice because it all kind of comes together. So we're a nachos, green onions family. I've got some salsa cilantro lime if david wants some of that it's a new sauce sour cream cheese we're going to put all that together so when i do my nachos i put the meat on first um, i like to put the cheese on the very very top so everything sticks to the chips um, and it might seem very elementary but when i lay our chips out this is boiling so this is great we'll just kind of reduce some of that 
water in there, which is what you're supposed to do with regular taco meat. When I layer chips out, I just, again, sounds elementary, but I try to cover all the spots and not do thick layers because that way you get some of the meat on all the pieces instead of just sometimes in a restaurant, you know, you get a glob on the top and all the ones underneath don't have anything on them. So I try to kind of spread that out and be a little intentional about how we do that. Um, and this, let me get my broiler. We like to put ours in the, under the broiler. Some people do the oven, but obviously a lot quicker under the broiler. Uh, and I do mine on high. So we'll let that heat up for a minute. And while this is reducing, so again, I'm amazed at all the things we've been doing with the rabbit meat. I had no idea. So I'm super excited about that because David and his buddies harvested a lot of rabbits this winter season. So I feel good about the fact that we're going to be able to use those. Um, and we're just going to kind of explore some of the new dishes that we can do with rabbit. Um, last year, David deboned fresh rabbit for me, and we did some things with that. This is really super awesome. We put it in the crock pot at night. It cooks overnight. Um, I go to work, and David debones it. It's great. So just take a few minutes here to get reduced down. Um, I don't know if you can see that, David, about how it's kind of coming. So you want most of the water to come out because you don't want your nachos to be, you know, soggy. So I have it on high. Um, just You just kind of stir it constantly on high. And when you finally, you know, see it kind of start to stick, obviously most of the water has evaporated, but then the seasoning is all worked into the meat. It's the first time we've done this, so I'm sure it's going to be awesome. So almost there. You can use any kind of sauce that you want that you normally eat on your nachos, but any toppings you would want, I think. Um, we're going to put this together in just a second. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to David because he's the rabbit guru. He makes chicken and dumplings, which if you have not seen that, you're missing it. So I'm sure he'll do that on a feature if he has not. You're talking okay. about the rabbit and dumplings? Rabbit and dumplings. Yeah, oh you, my God. you're saying chicken. Anything that's, that you can do with chicken, yeah, you, can, like you chicken. can use rabbit. <laughs> I, I covered that, and, and I make the same mistake all the time. But uh, it, it, It's fabulous. It tastes great. And for people who think, so I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to try it. It's rabbit. I have been amazed at how good it is, and obviously subconsciously calling it chicken. So, um, I'm just going to kind of kind of try to spread it a little bit. Take small pieces and just, you know, you don't want to grab a glump because you'll end up with a soggy section of chip. So, you're just going to have to be patient a little bit and spread it out. And it can be as loaded or, you know, a little bit as you want. Some people, you know, you might want to try it with just a little bit. I already know that we are really enjoying the rabbit. And I knew this would be good. Um, so we're kind of making some loaded here. And probably what I'll do with this right here is put it in a container and put it in the fridge. And um, tomorrow if David wants nachos for lunch, you can throw them together and toss a little cheese on them and good to go. So that's, so, all, that's all the meat you're going to put on it? That's all the meat I'm going to put on it because I don't want the chips to be soggy. Okay. So And typically when I do it with beef, that's about all I put because I don't want them to be soggy. Okay. So again... Mm -hmm. I put all my toppings on, which tonight consists of olives. I'm going to put the green onions on the top. If you like olives, we load ours down because we like loaded nachos. And I already cut these up. I buy them whole, um, you know, because we love olives. So there you go. Got all that on. If you happen to like tomatoes or whatever, I don't like mine to be soggy, so we don't do that. And David kind of missed it, but he had some little quesadilla hors d'oeuvres over here waiting on him while we were cooking. And so this is an 8-ounce pack um, because I made a few little quesadillas. We may have to open up a second pack, but typically an 8-ounce pack. And then I try to spread a thin layer. Again, I don't try not to glump it. 
because I like everything to be fully covered. You can kind of control that if you're doing it with your hands, which is really the best way to cook. Just kind of feel it and taste it. There you go. And I think that's enough. If you like a little more cheese, throw a little more cheese on. And we're going to put it in under the broiler. It's going to take probably maybe about three minutes. And then we'll pull it out and let you see it. Okay, quick and easy. Like we promised, took about three minutes. Um, and again, we do ours under the broiler. They come out perfect. Um, and for us, I'm going to squirt a little lime on it because I feel like that kind of gives it an authentic taste. So we'll just squirt a little bit of lime on it. That just makes all the difference in the world if you've never tried it. And then I'm going to throw some green onions on it because we like green onions. And that also, I think, enhances the taste. I'm sure it will enhance this rabbit flavor. And we are good to go. I'm going to dish it up and plate it up and we're going to eat. So that's it. Super simple. Use whatever salsa you'd like and sour cream probably and you've got loaded nachos. And one point you made is if you make too much, it's not very good. You can't really save it, so it goes to waste. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to eat nachos three or four days in a row. So that amount that we talked about, whether it's two cups, go ahead and make it up. I mean, this is enough, like I said, for somebody to have for lunch tomorrow. They will probably have it. It's quick and easy to fix. Um, and, I mean, you could freeze it, but... Why not just make some fresh the next time? This is a great amount to make, to make and to fix for the first time. All right, let me show you finished product here. Looks great. Can't wait to eat it. Loaded. All right, girls, what are y'all doing? What are we doing that Mom? What are we making? What are you girls making? We're making salad. What Let's kind of salad? salad. Look at Mom. What kind of salad? Rabbit. Rabbit That's salad? Is that like a chicken salad, but with rabbit? Yeah. So what do you got there? Recipe. A recipe, celery. so you got some celery. So Mimi's cutting up celery. How, how much celery do we need? Three. One cup. One cup, okay. And, and one cup of grapes. Oh, well, you got one. grapes and celery. What else y'all got? How about walnuts? Mm -hmm. Walnuts. Walnuts. We've and gotta have some mayonnaise. Mayonnaise, okay, some cool. Lemon. Lemon. Not quite. What else? Uh, rabbit. Hello. Oh, look at this. This is a big old bowl. Now we're not gonna make all of this into rabbit salad Water right chestnuts. now. Water chestnuts. Water chestnuts. That's a good one. So oh, sure. this is two crock pots of quartered up rabbit that has been deboned. I don't know how many rabbits that was, but that's a lot of rabbit meat right there. Really good. Took the bones out of it by cooking it in the crock pot. So um, hopefully, we've never done this, so hopefully this is going to turn out really good. And I don't know how it can't help but turn out good when you got something that cute working on it. So she's helping me. She's she's a, learning how to cook. She's learned how to, to help debone the rabbit. Now she's learning how to cook. This girl is going to make somebody an awesome, awesome wife one day. But he better like hunting or fishing or, what do you say? Please. Next. Next. <laughs> what you made there? I was making apples. You're making apples, but what have you made right here? What is that? Deer meat. No, it's not deer meat. Try again. Uh, is it rabbit? Rabbit. Rabbit salad? Is uh. it chicken salad? Man, what all you got in there? You got some grapes? And some walnuts? And put celery? Celery in water it? Water chestnuts? Mayonnaise? Special stuff? And apples? Mm -hmm. Well, you want Pops to try it? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. here. Here, Pops is going to try it. Pops is going to try it. Let me get me my rich cracker right here. You think it's going to be really good? Yeah. Oh, you get to eat it like that? I'm gonna get my red cracker out. You gonna try some? No, I'm gonna try a little bit. You gonna try a little bit? No. Okay. No. You, you wanna try one? No. Here. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit and hold it. You're gonna hold it? Oh, you're gonna eat it like that? Okay. <laughs> no, you I'm eat gonna, it without no. the stuff. All right, Pops look, gonna, look at how Pops is eating Pops, it. Pops gonna eat like this. You ready? Ready? 
Mmm. That's good. You have mm. to tell us if it's missing anything. And we'll doctor it up some more. It's good. Pop said it was good. What do you think? All right, as I stated before in one of my videos, I never liked rabbit until a few years back. I guess it's probably been 10 years, maybe something like that. When a guy named Jim Bug, I don't know if Jim Bug from Kentucky will ever see this video, but Jim Bug is the one responsible for me having any knowledge to do this. Uh, I told you before, my grandma uh, could not cook rabbit worth a flip. Uh, it tasted like leather. So I'm going to show you what I do when I fry rabbit. There's various ways to do it, but the secret to me is to cook it slow and keep it covered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this electric skillet and I'm going to put just a little bit of oil in it. You just cover the bottom a little bit. Just get the bottom covered. Don't have to be real deep. So the bottom is pretty much covered right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to electric skillet with a cover. I'm going to turn this on and I'm going to put it on, uh, I'm going to put it on high just to heat the grease up a little bit. And then we're going to turn it down. If you've got one that you can set, it's supposed to be on 180 degrees. This one's just a low, so we're going to set it on low. And this is going to actually take four hours to cook. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the pieces in there, let them cook for two hours, turn them over, let them cook for two more hours, then we'll turn it up high and brown it and it will be tender, fall off the bone, and will be delicious. But what you do first is you, you, pick, your, you pick your cuts of rabbit. Now, I'm, I'm being funny here, but I went through the recent ones we had, and this must be a rabbit that I shot because this one wasn't all shot up. See, so that's a head shot. What you do with those that are shot up real bad is you give those to your buddy to take home, see? You keep the real good ones and the ones that aren't shot up bad. So you don't want to have any hair in it and and shot in it and all that stuff. So this one looks like one you just raised and, and basically uh, got from the grocery store because uh, this one is a very nice looking piece of meat. But what you do is you get you a bag, it's the way I do it. You can do it a various different ways. Some people would put this in buttermilk and all that first, but what Jim always did is he said, just get you a sack and just take and put you some salt. And uh, so I'm just putting a little salt in it, just a little bit here, if I can get it to go in the bag and not fall out. See, I'm not normally a cook. It's normally my wife that does all this, but believe it or not, she thinks I can do this better than her. So, you know, every now and then you find, you know, what they say, a blind squirrel gets a nut every now and then. Now, this is a various twist we're going to do. We normally just put uh, pepper, salt, and something else, but my wife's got this garlic pepper, so we like garlic. So we'll put a little garlic pepper in here. And, uh, you know, you can just make this up however you want to. For some of y'all that were around back years ago, they used to have a thing called shake and bake, right? For those of you that have heard the term shake and bake, some of y'all may have heard it on the movie with Ricky Bobby, you know, shake and bake time. Well, here's what we're gonna do, shake and bake. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a piece of meat in here and we're just gonna remember to shut it and we're gonna shake it up. If I can get that shut good, I'll just fold it like that. And we'll shake it real good. And then what you do is you take this top off. That grease is already starting to heat up. So let me turn that down to low. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this piece of meat in there. There's a nice piece of meat that's going in. There we go. Let's put the next piece in there. We'll fold it over. Same thing. You're just going to do that to each piece. And you're going to set it in there. And uh, I promise you this right here. And what's the old saying? Make you slap your grandma. I don't know why they ever said that. I like the term... It'll make your tongue slap the top of your mouth. I like that term better than slapping your grandma because I just I would have gotten a lot of trouble for that. And uh, good thing I didn't hear that term when I was a kid. I'd probably been stupid enough to try it. But anyhow, so we're just putting these pieces in. And uh, this one was a nice size rabbit. And uh, so what we did is we cut the back into two pieces. That back is really, the back legs and the back to me are the best. The front legs are good too though. And so it's nice and tender. And this is going to really, really look different when we get done. I'm going to put both of these pieces in here at one time because they're smaller. I'm going to put them in there. I'm going to fold that over. And uh, because my wife is uh, trying to 
not have gluten. This is gluten-free flour. Myself, I, I try to order extra gluten flour if I'm, if I'm doing it, but I'm just giving her a hard time because she's filming this. So there we go. We've got it on low, and there's not a whole lot to this other than time. So all I'm going to do now is one of the most important things I've got to do is I've got to look and see it is 1130, 1134. So at 134, I'm going to have to turn this. So I'm going to set a timer to go off at 134 to remind me because you wouldn't want to leave this in here. So you just cover this up and you forget about it for two hours. Then we're going to turn it back over and we're going to cook it another two hours. Okay, it has now been right at four hours, and so now I'll let you look at it. Here's what it looks like. It's not brown, though, but I guarantee it's tender. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it up, and we're going to let it brown now. So you can't really, you can't really walk away and leave it real good now as it starts getting warmed up. I'll let that side cook and brown up. I'll turn it over and brown this other side that you saw straight up. And, um, and then we'll be done. And it'll fall off the bone. So it's really uh, not really a whole lot of work to this. It's just making sure you set your timers is probably the most important thing. But as you can tell, when I turned it up, I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, it's already starting to, starting to fry a lot better. So we're going to watch it close and turn them over, make sure it's brown. I'll show you the finished product in just a second. All right, it's browned up. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take it off. It's browned on both sides. Should be great. Got my little helper right here. She's been doing some dishwashing and helping out because we work around here, don't we? Yeah? You've been helping? All right. One day she'll be the one shooting these rabbits for me. But uh, So I'm going to take the lid off. Now don't touch this baby. It's very hot, okay? I'm going to set it right there. Don't touch it because it's hot, okay? Now, there's a front leg, and you can see it's brown. Stuff's falling off of it. It's going to be nice and tender. When you turn that up, it browns it up. Some of them a little more brown than others, but all of it's going to be nice and tender. And I just put it on a paper towel so that it'll get the, uh, it'll get the grease and... Uh, Man, that's some good-looking stuff right there. You zoom in on that if you want. And we'll let this, I've already unplugged this and turned it off, so everything will just cool down at this point. And uh, I'm going to tell you what, that right there is going to be some good eating. My wife is making some vegetables to go with it. I think we got green beans, uh, mashed potatoes. I don't know what else we got, but I guarantee you, you can't go wrong with, with fried rabbit when you do it right. Um... Just don't cook it like my grandma. Cook it slow and covered. That's the key as far as the way I do it here. If you've got a better way to do it, that's great. I'm open to any suggestions, but this right here works for sure. All right, here's the finished product for supper. We got green beans. You've heard of twice baked potatoes. This is two different types of potatoes. We've got mashed potatoes, scallop potatoes, and I picked one of the back pieces to try. I bet it's gonna be good. Do you think it's gonna be good? No. No? <laughs> What kind of comment is that, girl? Yeah. Oh, you got the special rabbit PBJ? Yeah, okay. You gonna try some? Mm -hmm. All right, I even got Knucklehead hunting partner at times here that's gonna try some yeah. for me. So uh, we'll see if, if, they, uh, if they don't like it, we won't let you know, but it's gonna be good. All right, here's a place you don't often find me, but as we're going through this, I thought I'd just go ahead and show you just how simple and easy it is to throw together this rabbit and dumpling. So what I've got is obviously a crock pot here. Take the lid off, and I'm, I've got my rabbit that I froze. See there, rabbit 323 is when we froze it. So it's, uh, it's actually May the 17th, I believe, something like that today. And I'm just gonna throw this together real quick. So I'm just taking my frozen rabbit, and uh, I'm gonna put it down in there. And uh, I like ra a, a good bit of rabbit in mine, so I'm gonna use two packages. Some people don't like as much rabbit as I do in mine, but this is what I do. And uh, so that'll cook all down real good. It's already pre-cooked, it's just frozen. So I got that in there. 
I got me two bags of this Walmart special peas and carrot mixed vegetable deal. And so uh, I'm going to just cut that open and uh, dump that in there. The second bag, same deal. Some of you guys have had this when I've hunted with you. Uh, most everybody likes it real well, and I, I'm not a, a well-known cook or don't even claim to be. All right, so here we got two cans of cream of chicken soup. So I'm just going to pop the top off of that and put those in there. And then what we'll do is in a minute, I'll put, uh, I'll use that can and I'll put four cans of water in here. So I only put water in as much as I put soup, one for each can that I put in here. And so uh, now two cans of cream of mushroom soup. If I can get it to come out for me. All right. That's what they make spoons for, so we'll get the rest of that out. And uh, like I said, if I can make this, anyone can make this. Even Hunter Childers, who claims he can't make a grilled grilled cheese sandwich. So uh, this is a this is for anybody. This is like cooking for dummies, and I'm a dummy, so I can say that. Um, so there's a second can of the cream of mushroom soup. And uh, we'll just get everything out of that. I think that's pretty good right there. And so now we're going to add our water. So we're going to do that four times. And number three. And we'll go with one more. And there we go. We got four cans in there. And now I always like to put a can of sliced potatoes in there. And so I already had uh, cut the lid on this. And, uh, and so there goes my potatoes in there. All right. Now you can do this with rabbit that's not already cooked first you can just put in and do like we showed you earlier in the deal we got a lot of frozen stuff in there so we're gonna go ahead and turn this on low um you can turn it on high if you're trying to get through a little quicker since this rabbit's uh already pre-cooked i'm just gonna put it on low and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add this is some pepper i couldn't find the big thing of pepper so i'm having to use a little table stuff my wife's not here she'd probably pull it right out and say dummy it was right here but anyhow I'm putting some pepper in there. Pepper don't come out real quick, so lest anybody think I'm dumping tons of pepper, I'm just putting pepper across the top where I can see it. Then I've got some salt, just regular old salt here. I'm putting a little salt in it. And, uh, and then I like to put a little garlic, garlic salt. So we're gonna put a little garlic salt in it because that's the way I like it. And so there we go. Now, all that took what, just a few minutes? We'll put the lid on that. And we're going to forget about it. It's sitting right here. Now, when I come back in a little later, I'm going to go pick Avery up from school. But when I come back in a little later, I'll just take that spoon and I'll stir this up a little bit as it starts to unthaw the meat and all that. I'll stir it up a little bit. And then what we'll do, and I'll show you this, we're going to come back in about an hour before we're ready to eat this. And we're going to put some biscuits on top of it. That's your dumpling. So it's a real simple recipe. So good. I, I got this recipe from Danny Pace out of Virginia. So I'm going to give him credit for that. And I have done it several times. So this is not something I came up with on my own. And, uh, but it's really, really good and so simple to make. And uh, I, I think it's, uh, it's a fantastic thing to do with rabbit. So I hope that uh, you try it and enjoy it as well. We'll show you the biscuits when the time goes by. It's currently about uh, one o'clock and uh, a little after one. So I'm gonna take and go pick Avery up from school, come back, check on this simple meal. When you don't have a lot of time to cook, you can just throw this in and come back and it's a piece of cake. All right, so I'm back, uh, showed y'all everything I've done. Now it's a little later in the afternoon. It's a little bit before we're gonna wanna eat it. So you open this lid up and uh, I sure wish the smell would come through the video and show you, but. Boy, that's looking good. So we just stirred it up a little bit 
And, uh, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to just take a can of biscuits and uh, we're going to open them. If I had any fingernails, I'd get this. I should have uh, pre-done this, but I didn't. So I'll, uh, I'll just uh, go down here where you're supposed to open it at and, and it'll be a little easier on me. Um, you know, my wife's got it lucky. She's behind this camera tonight. And actually, I have, uh, I've got supper here pretty much uh, ready. Just got to wait on these biscuits, and, uh, and, and she'll be served like a queen. So I'm just taking these biscuits, and all I do is just take the biscuit out, and you just pinch it off, and you just throw it in. It's so simple. You just, you just do that. I mean, even the little CEO is here being really nice and quiet in the background. Would you like to help me pinch some biscuits? Yeah. All right, get your little stool over there and you can help me. And just drag it up here and you'll be in this video. Anything to get her in the video. She loves this attention. So she's dragging her stool over here and I'm just keep going. And she's going to help me. And it's all going to be good. And uh, did you wash your hands? Yeah. First thing you better do is wash your hands. We wouldn't want dirty biscuits, would we? All right, so wash your hands real quick. Make, make sure it's good. There'll still be biscuits left. All I'm doing, guys, is I'm just taking these biscuits. Make sure you wash your hands. I'm taking these biscuits, and I am just covering the top of this, and uh, they're just going to sit up there, and they, they, they pretty much, they, they probably won't, uh, here, they probably won't uh, fall to the bottom at all. They'll just stay on top. It makes a nice little crust. You know, you could pretty much call this rabbit pot pie. It's more like a rabbit pot pie uh, than it is a chicken pot pie. And uh, here, I'll help you. You're having trouble. You're having difficulties. Here's you some soap. All right, there you go. Now do your thing. Sorry, we have to have a little uh, family time here. It's all good. Um, she'll get her hands rinsed off real good, and we'll go from there. But all I'm doing, like I said, is just tearing this up. You can see it's starting to cover it up. Hey, you need to dry your hands first. Just get you a little something to dry your hands. And so we're, uh, we're working here. We're multitasking. We're working with a granddaughter, CEO, and we're doing this shredding thing. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. All right, here, I'm going to give you one. Uh, and and, and th listen, listen, I'm going to scoot you over here. Don't fall. Don't fall. Scoot right here. Now, there's you one. Just pinch it off and toss it in there, okay? That's what I need you to do. Just look, just little pieces, little pieces like that. Just pinch it off. You got it. Just pinch it off like that and throw it in there. That's good right there. You, see, this is so simple. I told y'all it's so simple even Hunter Childers could do it. If you knew Hunter Childers, he, he can't hardly make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I know he can't do grilled cheese. And Laura's watching going, amen, amen. But you can make grilled cheese? Well, see, you, you're better than Hunter. But it's so simple that even Avery can help make this recipe. I bet you won't be long. She'd be able to do the whole thing because she's so good like that. But look, all we're doing is this, and we're just putting it on here like that. And uh, Avery, I'm going to help you finish up your biscuit, okay? Keep tossing yours in there. But that's all we're doing right there is just that right there. And All right, you do one more. And then what I'm going to do is what I do. Go ahead, toss that one in there. Rinse my spoon off good. All right. And what I do is I just take and I just, I just mash them down just a little bit on the top like that. You see, they won't go down. They're going to just keep floating. But that's what I do right there myself like that. And then here's the deal. We put the lid back on and we'll wait one hour. You can wait longer if you like your biscuits a little browner. You can wait a little longer. But if you'll just wait an hour... So I'll look at my phone, wait an hour, and it's ready to go after that. I'll give you a tip, though. If you've got the time, what I would do is when one hour goes by, I'd take the lid off and let it cool down just a little bit because it's going to be very hot to your mouth if you don't let it cool down a little bit. As You know, you can't just dive into it, so to speak. But uh, that's it. So, Avery, you want to go throw this away for me? Yeah. Okay, go throw this in the trash for me. Okay, and... Uh, Look, we'll do a small little video when we're sitting down to eat it. But guys, that's it. it this is so simple right here. Um, and it is excellent to eat too. So hope that's helped you with rabbit dumplings. All right, here we are. This is the finished product. Oh, like I said, I just came in from running, so uh, from chores. And so this is, uh, this is the finished product. 
You can leave it in longer, it'll brown these up, but they're a little softer here. My wife likes the, the dumplings a little softer, so that's what we're doing. So anyhow, all I do now is uh, dish it up. Boy, that sure looks good, even if I did have something to do with making it. So get a lot of rabbit meat in there. You know, and if you clean your rabbit meat really good, you, you won't have bone and you won't have shot in it and all that. So I'm going to dish up my wife a, a plate too here, or a bowl. And you know, if you, uh, if you get a, uh, if you get, um, get a bunch of guys together, I guarantee you they'll wipe this thing out. It with just four guys, probably they'll wipe it out if this is all you have. You could have something else with it if you wanted to, but there's a couple things that I like to put on it after I cook. Uh, we found this right here. I think you can get that at Walmart or something like that. Uh, it's it just I don't know how to describe it except it's just delicious. I usually put me a little hot sauce on uh, once I sit down to eat it, but I'm gonna do it without without any hot sauce or anything. Just do it with what I how I cooked it right there, but blow it off a little bit because it's hot. I guarantee you. If you don't like that, I don't know what to tell you. But that is some good stuff. Hey guys, Saturday morning, busy cleaning the house, and I got a very nice surprise. Um, while my hubby was out running dogs, uh, he went and picked eight cups of wild blackberries. So, brought them in and said, there's the cobbler. So I'm really excited about it. And um, so we, first of all, washed these really good, stuck them in a colander, washed and picked off any little extra pieces. So we got all that ready. And um, what I realized was that he brought so much that we're gonna freeze part of it. And so this is the way that you freeze them, ladies and gents, if you happen to be picking wild blueberries or if your husband happens to bring them home, you wash them, lay them out flat on a plate, and I covered mine with saran wrap because I don't like them to absorb the smells in the fridge. Put it in the freezer, freeze it overnight, and then just put it in a Ziploc bag tomorrow. They'll be good as new for the next batch of cobbler. So Dave and I are on the keto diet, so we kind of have a little bit of a adaptation of a classic cobbler. So you can do it any which way you like, but that's what you would do um, with the fresh berries. So we've already got this all prepared. I cannot wait for you guys to see this when it comes, <laughs> comes out of the oven. I'm sure it's gonna be delicious. And also kind of a fun 4th of July, you know, red, white, and blue kind of a thing. So um, just getting them in there. We've already got our oven preheated. Um, I am sure this is gonna be amazing. So, it said to drizzle butter over the top. Can we say, so yummy. So it's got real butter drizzled all over the top. And then for us, we use, you know, some substitute products for sugar and that sort of thing because of the keto. But this is powdered sugar, basically. Yummy, yummy. So this is gonna go in the oven and cook. And so when David gets in tonight from all of the other amazing dog things that he does here, we will have hot blackberry cobbler. Thanks, honey. <laughs>